Former President George W. Bush's Attorney General, Alberto Gonzalez, penned an op-ed in Politico this week in which he endorsed Vice President Harris while admitting, quote, we do not yet know exactly how Harris will govern if she is elected. Now, leaving aside that it is nonsensical, if not totally idiotic, that someone of his supposed stature would endorse someone for president while admitting he doesn't understand their governing philosophy, it's fundamentally dishonest, because we do know how she will govern. Ms. Harris, time and time again, has told us exactly what she supports, eliminating private health insurance, carbon and use taxes, expanding welfare giveaways, critical race theory, the Green New Deal, the woke agenda, including what amounts to pornography in school libraries, destroying women's privacy and the integrity of women's sports, taxpayer-funded gender transition surgeries, taxpayer-funded abortion on demand, banning fracking, closing pipelines, the collapse of the southern border, $5 trillion in tax increases, including on gains you and I haven't realized yet, speech codes and censorship, reparations, lawfare against her political opponents, and trillions more in spending for welfare and giveaways for people who don't work and illegal immigrants. Socialist Senator Bernie Sanders said the quiet part out loud last week. No, I don't think she's abandoning her ideals. I think she's trying to be pragmatic and doing what she thinks is right in order to win the election. That's right. She's a socialist. She will lie to the American people to attempt to look more moderate and pragmatic and then govern from the far left. This is what they did with Obama. It's what they did with Biden. And they will try and do it again with Harris. You have to be blind to see the pattern, not to see the pattern of behavior. So in another twist of this soap opera of a political season, Donald Trump is now the safe, moderate and pragmatic choice in the election. Sure, maybe his freewheeling style can be hard to follow. Sure, finding a soundbite from him can be difficult. Yes, maybe you're not the biggest fan. But in comparison to Harris, it's true. Wall Street Journal columnist and former Reagan speechwriter Peggy Noonan, who's no fan of Donald Trump's, by the way, even articulated this in a recent column that this is a path election, not a person election. You don't really have to like Donald Trump to realize that the path that Kamala Harris will set us on will be damaging to human freedom and flourishing, perhaps unlike anything that we've ever seen before. Moderates and independents care about that path ahead. They want some degree of real pragmatism. They want someone of conviction to lead, but they also want to see real, definable progress on the issues that they care about. There's a reason why the Harris campaign is talking about a supposed new way forward. Independent and independents and swing voters want a change from the failure of Mr. Biden. They are skeptical that they will get it from Ms. Harris. Following the debate, focus groups or voter analysis conducted by Reuters, Fox and The New York Times all showed Mr. Trump performing better than Harris among independents. They realize she doesn't represent change. If Donald Trump can articulate to suburban voters outside of Atlanta, Philadelphia, Phoenix, and Detroit that he will keep their communities safe from the cartels, the gang violence, and the crime from illegal immigrants, he wins. If he effectively frames himself as the safe choice for independents and moderates on the economy, he wins. Republicans have tried for years to convince people that Mr. Trump is a conservative while Democrats have poured likely billions of dollars into painting him as a right-wing extremist. The MAGA movement may be a significant political force, but it's not popular with the people that Mr. Trump needs to win this election, namely more moderate and swing voters. What is popular are strong border and policing policies to keep communities safe. What is popular are pro-growth economic policies and tax cuts. In any election, of course, there's a temptation for candidates to only talk to their base. There's a temptation to try to address too many issues. There's a temptation to overcomplicate your message. For Donald Trump to win, he must avoid those temptations by focusing like a laser on pragmatic, common sense approaches to the issues that moderates care about. He has such an incredible potential here because his core issues overlap with the issues of more moderate and independent voters. 
stick to the economy, tax cuts, and public safety to include addressing illegal immigration. That's it. Hour-long speeches are not necessary. Long lists of grievances, not necessary. Hyperbole, not necessary. Long press conferences about a dozen issues, not necessary. As the Democrats have proven, it doesn't take much to frame yourself as the safe, pragmatic, and moderate voice. Donald Trump can do that while framing Ms. Harris as, the, as an extremist using her own words. We have two million people cross this border for the first time ever. You're confident this border is secure? We have a secure border. To stick to simple, direct messages and what Democrats want to make a personal election all about Donald Trump suddenly becomes a path election. We've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. Do that, and that puts Donald Trump on a path to victory.